Okay guys, so the web audio API is unsurprisingly a web API. And what that means is that it just comes in Chrome. Chrome and other modern web browsers just come with this built in, so there's nothing you have to install. There's a bunch of web APIs, like you probably know the Fetch API, maybe some of the other ones on here, but the web audio API is sick. The Mozilla docs have a ton of really good stuff in them. They've got these cool visuals. Here's that like pipeline kind of structure we were talking about of the signal flow. And uh, there's also a basic concepts behind the web audio API tutorial and a more advanced tutorial. Let's go check out the basic one for right now. But uh, here's how we can access the web audio API. So audio context, it's just already in Google Chrome. You don't have to install anything. You just call new audio context. This is a class with a constructor. It's gonna build for us a new object and it's gonna save it to context. So from any window in Chrome, open up your dev tools, go to your console, clear out your console, and we're gonna say let, and instead of naming it context like they did in the docs, we're gonna name it ACTX. And we're gonna say equals new audio context. And now if we say ACTX return, we can see what we're getting there. Current time is just how much time has passed since this audio context was created. And audio context is going to use this like an internal clock to make sure that things happen at the right time and to synchronize things. So if we say ACTX dot current time, we're going to get some value of time. And if we wait a little while and say ACTX dot current time again, now we get a different value because some time has passed. There's also the destination, and that's just called destination because it's where all of our signal flow is gonna end up going. It's just the end of our pipeline. We hook up to that, and then our sound goes to the speakers or whatever you're hooked up to. Let's just save that as a variable called out for now. Like that. And now out is our destination. You'll also see that our audio context, our ACTX, has a prototype that it's inheriting a bunch of properties and methods from, and that also has a prototype and on here you're going to see a bunch of create functions a bunch of methods that we're going to use to create all the different little pieces of our audio pipeline so let's try using this create oscillator one to go make an oscillator let's go down here and we'll just say let osc1 equal actx dot create oscillator and now we can see what that made for us so there's a bunch of stuff in here, only a couple things we're going to need though. The frequency controls the pitch of the oscillator, we're going to use this to tell the oscillator what note to play. Notice though that it is not a number, it's an object. It's got a dot value property that's a number, but it itself is an object that's got that dot value property, and it's also got a prototype of audio param from which it's going to inherit a bunch of different methods that we're going to use to change that dot value over time. So very similar story with the detune, it's also an audio param that has a dot value and is inheriting a bunch of methods from the audio param prototype that are going to be used to change that dot value over time. And also the detune we use to change the pitch of the oscillator, but in much smaller amounts than the dot frequency. So dot frequency you would use to set the note of the oscillator, detune you would only use if you were trying to move that oscillator a little bit off of the exact pitch of that note it's playing. You would use this, for example, if you had a bunch of oscillators all playing the same note, you could move them all a little bit off of the exact pitch of that note, and then it would produce a chorus effect. There's also the type property, which is just a string, so not an audio param object. It doesn't have a dot value, doesn't have any methods that it's inheriting. It's literally just a string. That's what we're going to use to tell our oscillator what type of wave it's going to make. So it can be sine, sawtooth, square, or triangle, and each one is going to have different kind of flavor or timbre to it. So this thing's got a prototype on it. And that prototype has a prototype on it. And that prototype has a start method and a stop method. The start method starts our oscillator playing. The stop method kills it. We've also got another prototype on this thing, and that has a connect and disconnect method. And those we're going to use to connect or disconnect an audio node to the next audio node in our pipeline until we get to the destination, which we will also dot connect to. Every audio node we're going to use is going to have the dot .connect and the dot .disconnect because they're all going to inherit it from this audio node class here. So let's close this whole thing up here. And now an oscillator needs some gain. So we're going to make that the next piece of our little audio pipeline here. We're going to say let gain1 equal actx.create gain. Say gain1 see what that gave us and surprise it's another object the only thing you really need to know on here is the gain and that's going to be another audio param so it's going to have a dot value and it's going to be inheriting all of those methods from its prototype that we use to change the value over time 
And aside from that gain, really the only thing is that on the prototypes prototype, we got connect and disconnect because it's another audio node. So this is how we're gonna connect this gain node to other nodes in our audio pipeline. Command K to clear out our console. Now we're gonna hook up all of our audio nodes into a pipeline. We're gonna say osc1.connect gain1 gain1.connect and you could say actx.destination or you could just say out since we saved that as a variable named out earlier. And now we've got it all hooked up. We can just say ask1.start. And now our oscillator is playing. So let's clear this again. And now we're gonna do some stuff on the ask1.frequency. If we do dot value and hit return, we're gonna see the current frequency of our oscillator one is 440, which in Hertz is the fourth octave A. And that just happens to be the default that oscillators get for their frequency. And what we're gonna do is we're going to change this value over time using the methods that osc1.frequency is inheriting as an audio param. First, we're gonna change the type on this oscillator to make it a little bit easier to hear what's going on with it. And when you change the type, since it's just a string, you just set it to another string. You don't have to use a dot value or any methods or anything because it's not an audio param, it's just a string. So now we're gonna use the oscillator one dot frequency dot linear ramp to value at time method. And the first argument is gonna be the value we want it to go to. And the second argument is gonna be the time we want it to get there. So we're gonna say go down to 100 Hertz and the time we want you to get there is the ACTX dot current time plus six seconds. So the ACTX current time is gonna be the current time whenever this function runs. So it'll add six seconds onto that and then it'll approach 100 and get there at that time. So now you can hear it descending in pitch. And now it has stopped at 100 hertz. Now we're going to send it back up with osc1.frequency.linearRamp to value at time. This time we'll send it up to 1000. And we'll say actx.currentTime and we'll give it something super long like a whole minute. Now you can hear it rising. And what we can do is do osc one frequency dot cancel scheduled values and we'll pass it in the actx dot current time. And now we can check what the oscillator one dot frequency is. And it's 836 point something something because it was on its way from 100 to 1000, but we stopped it using the cancel scheduled values method and passing it in the actx.currentTime. So now it is still 836.77 something something. If you don't care how abrupt the change is, you can also set an audio param by just setting the dot value on it, like that. But anytime that you need to do a transition over time, you'll need to use one of these linear ramp to value at time, set target at time, uh, exponential ramp to value at time. There's a few different kinds, but they're all just gonna change that value over time if you don't wanna do it in a very abrupt way. Now, I don't know about you, but I find pure oscillators buzzing at a static tone to be kind of a little bit, I don't know, annoying, so yeah, we would just want to say ask one dot stop. And now it's done. So obviously we didn't produce anything here that most people would consider to be music, but the point was more so to take a look at the fundamental concepts of the Web Audio API and the ways that we can use it to build our audio pipelines, which we will then build cool user interfaces for using React.